In nature, anything that flies has symmetry. And in the early days of human flight, mimicking nature made sense. But as we pushed onto ever higher speeds, our stubborn insistence on symmetry might have been a mistake. In the 1950s, a brilliant NASA engineer began to push for a radical new approach, proving theoretically, and with prototypes, that aircraft didn't have to be symmetrical. The implications of his work are profound. It suggests we should be flying a lot faster and more efficiently than we are today. Since the dawn of flight, the aircraft had been getting faster. In 1920, the fastest plane could barely reach 300 kilometers an hour. By the 1940s, they were already flying three times as fast, but there seemed to be a limit beyond which they simply couldn't go. Pilots called it the sound barrier. Above a certain speed, aircraft stopped accelerating, control became increasingly difficult, and stress forces could even cause an aircraft to break apart in mid-air. But in 1947, a daring test pilot flew an experimental plane beyond the speed of sound, proving that the sound barrier wasn't a barrier at all. It's just that supersonic flight revolved around a different set of aerodynamic principles. In the decades that followed, engineers mastered the physics of flying supersonic, pushing speeds ever higher. But a new challenge emerged, designing an aircraft that would perform well in both flight regimes. Any aircraft optimized for supersonic flight would, by definition, fly poorly at subsonic speeds. Because the ideal wing at lower speeds was long and straight, but for supersonic flight it was thin or sharply swept, a shape that struggled to generate lift at lower speeds. Engineers struggled to find a solution, eventually coming up with a kind of wing that could transform in mid-air. Functioning more like a straight wing at subsonic speeds and sweeping back for supersonic flight. But variable sweep wings created their own set of problems. Pivot mechanisms had to bear immense lift, rotational, and bending forces. Shifts in the center of lift had to be compensated for with larger stabilizers or other systems. All of which added weight and complexity, largely undoing performance gains. Variable sweep wings were only successfully applied to a small number of military aircraft, none of which are still produced today. The sound barrier might not have been an actual barrier, but it seemed that flying faster would always involve serious